Okay, welcome to the Tuesday, January 18th meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, <laughs> member. Ms. Pritchett, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right, so a good part of this has to do with letting people who are watching um, over the live stream on Orca Media know how to get access to the meeting, but there's also some information for people who might be attending um, a Montpelier Design Review Committee meeting remotely for the first time. So listen up. Um, okay, so first off, if anybody is viewing this meeting via Orca, you do have the option to participate in tonight's meeting. If you look at the agenda and see that there's something you want to talk about or have comments on, you can log in to Zoom using this link here. Um, you can also phone in using this phone number and then plug in this meeting ID once you get into the, the call. Um, if anybody is trying to log in and has having problems, please email me. There's a, my email address up on the screen there, and I'll leave this up for a few minutes. Um, for those who are attending via Zoom, note that turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise for everybody, um, including for the ARCA streaming and for the recording that will be used for the minutes. Um, please reserve your chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. If you have a question or comment about an actual item on the agenda, please raise your hand. Um, and everybody tonight so far seems to be on Zoom. So if we have somebody call in later, we'll, we'll worry about that then. Um, we don't have general members of the public tonight so far. Um, so I, I think don't think we're going to have a lot of cross comments tonight. Um, if I do get an email and can't seem to get somebody to, to log into the meeting, so it means that the public is unable to access, then the meeting will have to be continued to a time and place certain. certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Unless anyone has anything to offer at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I move. Second. Here. All in favor of all in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Liz. And Eric said had to give his yes in there. Okay. And Steve. So the agenda is approved. We can go to the first application for 35 Elm Street for the replacement of two new signs. Is someone here from the from the applicant application. Yes, I'm here. Meredith Muse. I'm going to turn it up on the speakers a little bit. Okay. okay. Hold on just a moment. We'll turn up the volume a little and then you can describe your application for us. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear it. Okay. If everybody else is okay. Okay. Go ahead and explain your application. Okay, um, so my hope is to install two signs outside of the, um, let's see, I'm not sure which end of the building it is, but the end closest to Langdon Street. And one of them would go over the picture window that looks into the business. It's an arch, an arch sign. And then the other one would be a small projecting sign that comes off from the building that you would pass under as you walk along the sidewalk. And um, I would like to install two lights that have shields on them so that they project the light directly onto the sign that's attached to the front of the building. Is the size 
of the sign conform to their requirements? Yep, yep okay. the size is just fine. Okay. Meredith, are those two windows above? Are, is that an apartment? Uh, I'm not sure what's up there. Okay. The lights would be positioned so that they don't shine up into the windows, but are um, just above the sign, angled in toward the center of the sign coming this way. That's exactly what I was thinking of, yes. Yep. And then the other thing I wanted to say is the original application went in that I was gonna do it on three quarter inch plywood. And it seemed like it was gonna be kind of heavy. And my brother um, does, he's part of a, a sign building construction. He does margins and metalwork. And he said he can build the sign to look exactly as the sign that was proposed but out of a lighter aluminum material so it wouldn't be so heavy on the side of the building but the coloring would be the same yes and then the sign that's projecting out from the building would be wood Quick question on the sign above the window. How tall are the letters? Uh, I don't have the proposal with me, but I sent a drawing to scale. Let's see. You hang on one sec, I'll go grab my drawing. over the window. My best guess is that they're about 12 inches. The letters themselves, the font is about 12 inches because the whole height of the sign is three feet. So the cap letters are 12 inches? That's my guess, yeah. Okay. So the small lettering would probably be somewhere between six and eight maybe. I think around eight. Okay. And then this is the drawing for the sign that projects out over the sidewalk, and that's two feet by one foot. The projecting sign, is that a darker colored border, or is that the color of the material of the sign? Uh, that's a darker colored border. It's like a dark green with a pale green inside. Okay. Oh, is, that's black. Then that's black around the outer edge. You're right. Okay. Is the, is the same border going around the larger sign over the window? Yes. It's okay. Got a black to it. And I'm assuming you're using these sort of like stainless button sort of hardware mounting things for both signs? Uh, those, well, no, the, the buttons are gonna hold the sign against the facade of the building so that it's projected out a little bit so it doesn't get moisture build up behind the sign against the clabbers. Um, so it projects it out a little bit. And then I had sent a photograph with my application of the metal uh, hardware that comes out that holds the shingle. It's like a iron scroll work doohickey that looks like a plant hanger sort of thing. I see. So the, the, the wrought iron scroll work is going to be fastened to the building directly through that. And then right. the buttons are to hold the sign off the clapboards so that there's yeah. some space between the back of the sign and the outside of the clapboards. Yes, yeah, so that um, my landlord asked so that we didn't get a lot of moisture buildup behind the sign yeah. damping the clapboard.
One thing you may want to consider at your option, I'm looking at the light fixtures you're using. Mm -hmm. It looks like the way that they mount, they will be parallel to the facade of the building. Mm -hmm. you, you may want to think about, because of the, the spread of the canopy on those, you may want to think about a similar fixture if it has a, a slightly larger gooseneck that aims back towards the building only oh, because okay. only only to for people walking along the sidewalk so there's not any glare shining down on someone walking towards the lights from either direction yep. and again that's a consideration I mean that that type of fixture is fine, but you may want to find one that has a, just a slightly longer uh, reach and angled back towards the building. And again, that will put more light on the sign and less light on the sidewalk. Okay. Yep. I will look for something like that. That's a good. That's a great suggestion. Again, you want all the light you're generating to go on the sign. <laughs> right. That is the purpose. <laughs> Does anyone have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Well, the one I have is it seems uh, like that's a, a vinyl siding that's on that building. And I'm a little concerned about how you're going to be able to like mount your lights and the sign. I, I guess I could figure out how the sign will work, but it feels like it might be nice if there was a way to put a, like a sign band kind of block there that allowed your lights to like be mounted flat versus you'll probably have to cut some blocks in to mount the lights onto anyhow. Um, I'm looking at the one, uh, the one box that's kind of coming out above the door and the way that electrical mount will be kind of awkward on a piece of vinyl siding. So and what you're suggesting is like a, a piece of wood that spans the length of the sign and out far enough to also mount the lighting to? Guess what I'm proposing, or at least thinking out loud about at the moment, would be to actually um, cut out all that vinyl and put a, a flat something back there like a sign band that would allow for your sign to fit there nicely and the lights to go on it nicely um, so that it 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 felt like a a uh, a finished product versus having the lights kind of like awkwardly put onto the the vinyl they actually they actually make in the lumber yards carry them, they actually make a block that fits a standard four inch box. And what you do is you mount that box up under the the next row of siding so yep. that it helps cover the block and you cut the block and you basically cut a piece of the vinyl out. Yeah. And then that block mounts in and then they can drill through for the for power. Right. To power it. At minimum I think we should you should be thinking about some sort of block for that for those lights to um, and they sit nicely on and and they actually make them to size for the reveal on the siding so yep. you can get if you have three and a half inch reveal they make a seven inch block yep or four inch they make an eight inch block and yep. then the width required for your electrical box yep Okay, uh, that sounds like something I'll have to run by my landlord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the sign band sounds nice, but I would think that if you did it, you'd want to do it across the whole building, right? Yeah, Otherwise, it would look a little awkward. Yes, <laughs> certainly possible. But I do think that if you're going to install those lights out there, yeah. at minimum, they should be on blocks that allow them to be securely mounted to the building yeah. in a... And camouflage in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that and makes look sense. look intentional. Yeah. Is that what they're called, blocks? Is there a... Yes, it's a, uh, it's a block that's designed to mount electrical boxes 
on a building that has clapboards. Okay. And again, they're available at lumber yards and some of the electrical suppliers uh, carry them as well. And they make them out of wood and synthetic materials that look exactly like wood, like a Zach or clear products, K-L-E-E-R. Okay. And again, you may want to check with the landlord to see what might be the best solution since there are a couple of options. All right. It's just that you can't really mount an electrical box on top of siding because the siding is so spongy and if you screw it tight, it's going to warp the vinyl siding. Gotcha. So again, whether you use wood siding or vinyl siding, you use these cut in blocks for light fixtures. Okay. And that's pretty standard. The electricians are familiar with those as well. All right. And again, that's, you know, whatever she, whatever system she works out with the landlord is fine. Fine with me, yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? I'm good. Thanks. Not for me. Okay, I can go down, I can read down through the criteria for signs in the design control district. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structure of the site and surrounding properties. That's acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bans on historic structures. That's acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there be, shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. Acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. Th these are acceptable in their locations. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. Acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. That's acceptable as well. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades of historic buildings shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity or cover or impact character defining architectural features. That's acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively. And again, the use of a ghost of a gooseneck facing back towards the sign will give, will give you better lighting for the sign and less lighting on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Eric says yes. Martha, I'm a yes. Liz, yes. And Steve says yes. So application is approved. Thank you. Um, so Meredith, the um, because they didn't add any like changes to the application, basically, um, I, I'm going to take this recommendation form and we will get your permit issued in the next day or two. If they had made some some tweaks to the application with their recommendations, I would have sent it to you and had you sign it and get it back to us. Okay. Um, but it, you know, there's going to be some some ideas and options for you here. Um, okay. But I, I think we're or are you putting on the about I'm just, the block? I'm just well, both the block and uh, the, and, and the option to use okay. a longer gooseneck to concentrate lighting on the sign. Oh, sorry. So often, I you you write that all in before you have them vote. Well, I didn't have time to squeeze <laughs> yeah, it in. No, no worries. <laughs> uh, so because he is adding stuff in there in the recommendation block, I'll just scan it to you, and you can just okay. sign it and then scan it back. Okay. okay. Um, and and then, we'll need. Go ahead. Go I was going to say we'll need a little time because you're adding the lights. We have to do an administrative site plan report. Um, just it's 
adds a little bit more time, but you should be able to get the permit pretty quickly. What were you going to say? I was going to say, if for some reason um, my landlord is uh, not on board with me cutting out pieces of the vinyl siding, um, then we just drop the lighting perhaps from the application. Yeah, that's always an option. And that's if, if you, you're getting a permit that lets you do these three things, right? The lights, the wall sign, and then the projecting sign. If you decide not to do one of those, it's fine. You don't have to come back to me. Okay. And then um, I'm just not sure what the next step is. Do, do you all approve the work once it's done before I can be open for business? Or is this something um, that... No, you can, I mean, you can open for business without the sign, um, but we'll, we'll get you, we'll, I will be in touch and you will get a physical permit um, and we can either mail it to you or you can come and pick it up. Um, okay. But I'll email you with a scan of this recommendation form for you to sign, or you can just come in the office tomorrow and sign it. Okay. Um, and we'll, but you'll get a physical permit that lets you know when you can put the sign up. All right. Terrific. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Have a good night. You too. Can I sign off now? You can. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 The next application is for 50 State Street for Althea's Attic, LLC, and by the way, it's Althea, A-L-T-H-E-A. -E yeah, I, I think there was a lot of back and forth. We got so used to there being in Athena's yes. Attic, and, and I know I, I corrected it at one place, and I think it got missed on this one. <laughs> and I'll return the, I'll turn the review of this one over to Eric, and Sharon, are you there for the application? I am here, yes, hello. Hello. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. If you'd explain your application and what you plan to do, that would be great. Okay. Um, the as as they said, the building I am at is 50 State Street. Uh, it was previously Salam Boutique. Um, so we are replacing the existing sign with the exact same size and shape. Um, the new sign is brushed gold. Um, as opposed to the existing sign, which is brushed silver, and all new graphics will be flat printed black. Um, it will be routed in black around the letters, and it will be trimmed out in black as well. So it's a gold and black. Yeah. If anybody wants me to um, share the images, let me know. And you're using the same mounting bracket to the building? Absolutely, yes. Steve, I'm going to ask you to be a scribe with the criteria. Okay. Answer the questions, and then I'll come down and sign it, or we can do it electronically. Okay. You read through, and I'll just circle whatever. You've got to read them. I don't have them up in front of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Number one for the, does anyone have any questions before I read through? The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior designs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structure of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. Number two, where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. Acceptable. Number three, if a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. Either acceptable or not applicable. Number four, it is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. Acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. Acceptable. And masonry buildings, this is not applicable. Number seven, 
sign design, color, and topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Acceptable. Number eight, sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. Acceptable. And number nine and 10 are not applicable. There is already lighting existing at the location. So Eric, I'll let you call for a vote. All in favor? Eric says yes. This is Martha, I say yes. Liz says yes. Ben says yes. So it's four to nothing in favor of the sign. So the sign is approved. Put, put on that you abstained. Uh -uh. Yeah, I, I have it. Yeah, I, uh, I had to abstain because we own the building. <laughs> uh, Meredith, you, you have an, an electronic signature for me, don't you? I, I do. Yes, I think Sign. I can make that work with this. Sign it and go for it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, so, um, Sharon, yes. this one, this one and did end up not having any recommendation issues with it. So, um, and there's no light. So we should be getting this permit ready for you tomorrow or the next day at the latest. Um, do you want us to mail it to you or do you want us to just email you when it's ready and you can come in and pick it up? Oh, you can just email me when it's ready and I will hustle on down there to pick it up. I'm excited. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Okay, goodbye. Bye -bye. Now I'm going to turn the chair back to Mr. Everett. <sighs> okay, we have a courtesy review of preliminary plans for a new memory care home at the Gary residence for at 149 Main Street. Is someone here to describe the application or review. Yeah, uh, I'm Tom Bachman, and I actually I just want to preface. I have a I have to get in another Zoom meeting at seven six forty five. So Dan Wheeler in our office will uh, take over if, uh, if I have to scoot out. And down below, you can see Don Stevens, who is the executive director for the Gary Residence and the Rescue Meadows. And we just asked Don to participate in case there were any questions or anything specific to um, what you or you know, the Gary residents. And Don, I don't know if you want to say a, a word or two. Just tell them about what what we're about. So that's up to you. So I think most of you know the Gary residents as the Gary Home. And they've been in Montpelier, where a nonprofit organization originally and still known as O.M. Fisher Home, which is over 100 years old and familiar. And the Gary Residence is our flagship. And we're looking to bring um, continuing care to the folks that live at the Gary Residence in Westview Meadows. And with that said, I assume, Meredith, that you have circulated the same kind of uh, the preliminary package that we had sent along a month or so ago? Yes, that's so that's what they have is the preliminary package. Yes. Um, they, I haven't given them any of the latest updates from Brian. Okay. Uh, and, and we are continuing to develop this. And when we have a formal application, um, I think it's going to be similar to what you're looking at today. But, you know, we're refining things, uh, trying to lower the bill and things like that. So. Basically, the project involves an 11,500 square foot addition that's behind the Gary residence. It is one level. Um, there are some code issues with the existing Gary residence uh, that we're trying to address as part of this project. So we'll be adding a stair tower on the back of the building uh, that connects to the second and third floor of the Gary residence to provide a legitimate second uh, means of egress out of that building. Uh, but the existing building, not the existing building, but the proposed building is, uh, is one level, consists of uh, 16 rooms, and there will be 
two doubles in there, so we will be able to provide a memory care facility for eighteen people. And uh, just in case you don't know, the care residence has 13 units of assisted living right now. Um, we are treating these as two separate buildings. Uh, probably one of the most complex things we're dealing with in this project is uh, floodplain issues. The existing Gary residence is in the floodplain. And when you do a new, dish, a new addition in the floodplain, a new building, you have to be two feet above the floodplain. So that means that if you think of the existing grade at the uh, Gary residence, our first floor of this uh, memory care facility needs to be almost 30 inches uh, above grade. So that means the, the first floor of this memory care facility will be about 50 above the existing Gary, Gary residence. We are limited in how much uh, renovation we can do to the Gary residence because if we go over a certain percentage uh, of the value of the building, we need to make it completely uh, flood proof. Uh, so we're, we're trying to be very cognizant of how much money we spend at the Gary residence. So the, uh, I think in your package, you'll see some of the, I, I'm sure you're all familiar with the building. You'll see some uh, photographs of the existing building. We are working with um, Scott Newman from 106 Associates as a preservation consultant. Uh, we've been on site with him. Um, he really doesn't have any big concerns of what we're doing as far as relating to the historic building. We do have a meeting um, Thursday morning at nine o'clock with people from the historic preservation office. And we're gonna look at the project and you know, in more detail with them. How much difference in the floor levels are there between the existing uh, first floor of the uh, Gary home and what you propose? It will be almost uh, twenty. It will be almost two feet higher than what we propose there. And, uh, how are you going to resolve that? I mean, as far as access. Yeah. There's an internal. If you look at the floor plan, there's an internal ramp that takes you into from, from where you enter the building. You ramp up to get into the Gary residence, and then you ramp up again to get into the memory care. There will be um, uh, food will be provided or, or prepared in the existing Gary residence kitchen. There'll be some upgrades to that. But, uh, ramp system that we were just talking about will also be the way to transport food up to the memory care facility. So uh, we're, we're, we're providing uh, 18 more meals from the existing Gary residence kitchen. Thank you. The parking is basically what we're uh, trying to retain the 18 parking spaces. We're working with Meredith on some landscaping uh, issues that we're looking at right now. Uh, so we may have to uh, incorporate some landscaping in that parking area. But we are flipping the parking. Right now the parking is uh, perpendicular to the inn at Mount Pillier. Uh, it just makes a lot more sense and a much cleaner site for the parking just basically uh, mirror it. So the parking will be against the um, sidewalk of the Gary residence. Tom, if, do you propose a basement under this new addition? No, we cannot have a basement because of the floodplain. Okay. In fact, we have to work with uh, Audra in the city. Uh, we're not sure if we need to do floodgates yet or whether we're going to be uh, wet proofing the link between the two buildings. Okay. So we've got basically, if you look at the floor plan, uh, you can see there's kind of a link that, that straddles the two buildings. You come in at an elevation of 5.4.5, you ramp up to get into the very residence of 5.25.5, and then you continue to ramp up to get into the memory pool facility, which is at 5.28. Um, there will be some sort of, we don't know yet, but some sort of terrace associated uh, with the Gary residence portion of the project uh, for outdoor dining, much like what they have now. And it will be located just behind the big maple tree on the uh, northwest side of the site. Uh, we do not know 100% sure what we're doing with the roof yet. We're working with our civil engineer. May have to balance some stormwater. The, the, the site is very tight. 
Uh, we have to treat stormwater on site as much as possible. Uh, so we are proposing that we have some sort of a green roof on this building. Um, but that is yet to be defined. Um, let me see, what else can I tell you? The, the, the memory care facility, we're providing an outdoor garden space that is self-contained. It will be behind a, um, a fence uh, or some sort of a structure uh, because the memory care folks will be uh, self-contained in, in their, their facility and we want to give them uh, kind of walking paths through the building and then they can go outside into the, uh, the, the garden. That's south facing, I think it's going to be a pretty nice area. If you look at the elevations, you can see the two links that we're talking about that we need to provide on the second and third floor of the Gary residence. It goes into this new stair tower uh, to provide a second ingress out of that building. But you see, there will also be, you know, if, if, if you're familiar at all with the site, there's uh, a couple of large there right now. Conform to accommodate this addition, so we'll be rep, rep, not replicating, but providing a new maintenance facility at the eastern end of the site for uh, the facility group. The on the north elevation, uh, if you look, there's a, uh, a, a kind of a glassy porch. We don't know um, exactly how it's going to be detailed yet. But that area is. Uh, where the ramp is, the ramp first in there to get you up to the dairy residence and then up to the memory care. The concept is that we would be treating that porch somewhat as a transition between the historic building and then our new building, which is behind. Uh, if you look at the uh, typical wall sections and building sections that we saw to, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, the floodplain issues. So when we're walking along the sidewalk along this new building, we're going to be about 30 inches lower than the first floor of the facility. Uh, and then at the very end of the package, this is a little outdated, kind of an image sketch we prepared for the Gary residents during the feasibility study. Just kind of shows you the feel that we're trying to accomplish with this building. You can see in that, that sketch, uh, you've got the historic building on the left. You've got our glassy link that connects to the fire, the uh, stair tower. And then you can see the, uh, the concept of what we're looking at for the uh, memory care facility. As I mentioned, as we're developing this, um, we're doing everything we can to lower the proposed building just because, just by virtue of it being, the first floor being 30 inches out of the ground, you know, above grade. This building is getting tall, and we want to make sure that it is, for lack of a better word, subservient or secondary to the existing dairy residents. So we're trying to do everything we can to keep the dairy residents, the existing historic building, uh, kind of front and center. And this is, uh, you know, somewhat of a background building. What gives you uh, a ten-minute overview? Uh, just, like I said, we really want to just introduce the project. We are anticipating having formal applications to the city uh, sometime in mid to late February, just depending on how things go. We're still making decisions on a lot of things. So um, just as I said, we, we had our technical review committee meeting last week with Meredith and uh, many of the city representatives. And it's the same thing. It was to introduce the project hear what they were going to be concerned about. And that's, uh, that's how we see uh, this introduction project. So with that, I'll be quiet. How much does this addition add to the footprint of the building? It's a 11,500 square foot footprint. The existing, yeah. building, the existing building is probably three, nine, probably with the basement, you count probably about 12,000 square feet. The existing building is three three levels. Yeah. Yeah. But um this looks to, this looks to me, Tom, like it at least doubles the the length of the building. Yeah, I think it probably does, Martha. I think you're right. Or maybe even triples. Yeah. yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's a probably a fair assumption. Okay. Because we're limited to uh, one level here. Yeah. Footprint gets large. 
That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And in case, just a little background, uh, memory care, it's imperative that they be on ground level. I mean, you, you, you don't want memory care folks on supper group floor, and that's uh, one of the reasons we have kept this a one level one story scheme. Tom, <laughs> Steve, Steve here. Because of the length of the building has, and I see it looks like on the on the back of the building, uh, on the I guess the south side, or somewhere near the south side, south southwest, whichever the south elevation showing, it looks like a long section of some kind of fencing or something. In the back, has any thought been given to doing some kind of a, a sun shading solar array? Uh, Steve, are you talking about the east side of the building? The south south elevation. South, okay, south elevation. Let me get to that. The building's rather long, which yeah, is fine. Okay. And you, it looks like there's a long section of some kind of fencing or something in the, that dark area. And I was asking, has anyone thought of using some kind of solar array to give some sun shading to serve two purposes in that section of the building, if that is accessible by foot. Yeah, actually, that's a very interesting question, Steve, because we've got a meeting tomorrow with Dawn and her representatives, and we are going to, I mean, basically code now requires that buildings be designed to be solar ready. So we have to make sure that this can accept solar panels. This building has to be sized for that. We have to bring power or a conduit for power up there. So we are going to discuss tomorrow whether it makes sense to at least get an alternate price to put some solar panels on that roof that would help screen. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of rooftop equipment on here. We've got air source heat pumps. Uh, this will be a totally uh, total electric building. So we will have rooftop equipment that needs to be screened. And the whole concept of screening that with solar panels, I think, is certainly something that merits um, investigation. Good. It, it might give you the same appearance and serve as a double function. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious what you're proposing as a siding. It says masonry memory care rooms, so I assume it's a masonry. But it feels as though you're being very intentional with your – with. Uh, with how you're breaking it up on on your windows so i'm imagining it's actually some sort of panel and not bricks but i don't i don't know what you're proposing well i think what we're looking at right was that, was that you ben yeah hi tom um yeah we are proposing a masonry building um but the appendages or the not the additions but the areas that aren't part of the main mass will either be a wood product or a fiber cement product but the, uh, what, we, what we're trying to do is we would like to have the um, actual resident rooms. They're, it's, it's a pretty clean plan. They, they flank uh, the north and south walls. We would like those to read as a masonry uh, mass. And we want to tie it to the existing very resident. So I certainly think that masonry is the appropriate material for the majority of the project. But like in the memory care garden, um, where people will be sitting and walking and we're probably going to do a lot of wood there just so that it is um, friendlier, more reminiscent of a house. Uh, for memory care folks, we want to make this as familiar as we can. And we're, we're trying to do the same thing inside and out with the building. I think it's a bit in the siding for masonry sorry dan i couldn't hear you i think that the divisions that you're seeing in the facade the masonry facade would be something like expansion joints so they might just be reading more heavily i like i like all those lines there and i like the way they sort of register with the window openings i think they're really i think it's a nice modern move now with the windows and looking at some optical windows, so I think those lots of windows that you see now at this point are actually up, broken up a little more and bringing that scale down. So those are evolving. Um, I just wanted to support the uh, 
your idea about having brick as kind of the dominant exterior material to, to blend with the Gary residence. So yeah, that's, thank you. On page A6, it shows typical exterior wall assembly is modular brick with ties. And Liz, I don't think uh, when we're talking about brick, I don't think we're, our intent is to match the Gary residence, uh, but I think we're, we would probably do some sort of a contrasting brick. I, don't, I think we want to definitely make this look like it was obviously a 21st yeah. century. I think that's fine. <laughs> yes, I, I was going to suggest that. And what do you mean by architectural concrete at base? Is that like a... Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's just not going to be raw concrete, whether that's burlap rubbed or polished or some sort of uh, scoring in that. Um, we don't really know yet, but we just think that if you're walking along the sidewalk and you've got about 30 inches of concrete, we don't want it to look just like a foundation wall. Even though we're proposing or we will have pretty extensive landscaping there, I think to soften that. Yeah, I think that's nice, not having just form work right. exposed, but have something with a little in, more intentionality there, I think is a really nice feature. Are you thinking about coloring uh, concrete at all? Um, we haven't given any, I, I don't think we've got to that point yet, Eric. This may be a question for Don. Um, assuming everything goes well with permits, et cetera, when would you expect to start building? We're hoping uh, late summer, early fall of this year. Okay. Yeah, Martha, the, uh, the goal right now is to have this out on the street in July with hopefully starting construction in August. Okay. There's a, you know, because we're dealing with a floodplain here, there's just so many state hoops we have to jump through and we're in the process of doing that right now with our civil engineer. And you had mentioned that this uh, more hand sketch was to kind of get the vibe and you were talking about, um, some sort of green roof opportunity. What I'm, what I'm seeing is a bunch of growies kind of coming down the side of the building, um, towards the back of it, sort of cascading down. Is that um, sort of what you're you're really thinking, or is that? Um... When we did this sketch, Ben, we had assumed there was going to be, this was going to be a really big rooftop garden for the very rest of the folks. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Budget has reared its ugly head. Yeah, so it does. We're not have. exactly sure what that means right now. So that's something we're working with our landscape architect right now. What's the best way to spend the money that we've got? Yeah. And actually, I got to tell you, we started out with what everybody thought was a really good budget. Um, but unfortunately, COVID has uh, eaten into that a lot. It's just tremendous. <laughs> Uh, cost increases for everything, everything from every component of the building. So we are just uh, very, very cognizant of every dollar we're spending right now. Yeah. Well, for what it's worth, I like the growies and if it's possible to keep them in there, uh, I, I like the gesture. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing we did talk about, Ben, if, if we can't, if for some reason we can't have them coming down over the roof, uh, we've been talking to our landscape architect about some sort of a kind of an aggressive line on that building also. Mm -hmm. Not an aggressive line, but it, we, we want to have some green on this building. So yeah. It's going to really soften it. It's, it's a tight site. We've got cars that are close to the building. So anything we can do to make people, I think, more comfortable as they're walking along that walk, uh, we're, we're really trying to achieve. Yep. 
it's a very good inten intention. Actually, we're, uh, we're just very excited about the project. It's just, you know, we, we just really like these downtown projects. And in my mind, this is exactly what we should be doing with some of these open spaces we've got around, you know, behind buildings. And uh, to me, this is just, it just checks a lot of boxes, I think, for environmental and the right location. It's, just, it's, it's a good project, I think. We're delighted to be working on it. I agree with all that. I'm, it's very nice to see something like this happening in in downtown and being part of kind of that our landscape and for the client tell that you're serving. I think it's a really really excellent project for the city. So, and I'm thankful that you guys are the ones doing the architectural work on it. Well, thank you. I I agree with what Ben says. I think it's a a good solution to providing the kind of facility in downtown, which is important to continue that both for the tenants and for the rest of the community. Well, I think one thing you know, the city has to, uh, I think it's great that the city has taken this and zoned this part of town so that it allows dense development like this. So as I say, in this mind, in, in my mind, this is exactly where we should be going to dense development. I know many families and residents will be thankful when this opens. Yeah, it seems like there's a need. Huge. Well, they want to keep their loved ones right here in Montpelier, but a lot of times that can't happen. So. You know, sometimes the demand is much greater than availability of space. Sometimes it's hard to find a space anywhere. Uh, that extended families had a recent experience and had to wait probably three months to find anything at all for somebody who was, was needing something like this. Sorry, my grand dog just arrived and my dog's barking, so I didn't care to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions, comments, or suggestions? Or did Tom have anything else to add? Well, we, I don't think we do, other than we hope to see you folks in a month to six weeks. Okay. That's our goal. We look forward to having you come back. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. And good luck with the rest of your permits. Yes. Look forward to coming back. Thank you very much for coming for the preliminary review. Thank you again and good luck with your project. Thanks a lot. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point, or has anyone had a chance to review the meeting minutes from December the 20th? Um, I have, Steve, and I'd move to accept them the way they are. This for is Eric for, seconds. For both dates? No, I wasn't here the second date. Okay. So this is just for the December 20th. That's right. Okay. So we have a second. All in favor, speak your names for the December 20th minutes. Eric. Martha. Steve. Uh, and Liz. Yeah, Liz, you were there. I'm just trying, just trying to remember. <laughs> I was you're, thinking you're... I, I didn't need to review any minutes, but um, because I thought it was just one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Your name was on the list, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. I wasn't that one then. Okay, sorry about that. Um, well, I haven't reviewed them, but do, do you have a majority? Yeah, yes. we're good. So you could just abstain if you want. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, and on the meeting for January the 3rd, uh, do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? Or does anyone have anything else to add or change?
I don't know that I have anything to add. It, they're complicated no, minutes, but I uh, <laughs> I accept them. Um, I'll I'll move it or second it, whatever Ben did. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so all in favor, speak your names. Eric and and Steve. So those minutes are approved as well. Thank you, everybody. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? Or do I hear a motion to adjourn? I will move that. And I will second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric says go for it. <laughs> yes. 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 And Steve says yes. So meeting is adjourned. We'll see you again on February the 7th. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Three weeks until our next meeting. You get a little break. Okay.